Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Graham Show. I'm your host, Graham Douglas, and today I have with me John Tartaglia. Hello. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I, want to, I want to start by talking to you actually about what you're, what you're doing right now, uh, which I find so exciting and interesting, which is you're, you're the resident director mm -hmm. of the current off-Broadway production of Avenue Q. Yes. How did all that come about? Well, it's weird. I mean, obviously, as an as a original cast member, um, you know, I, I have the benefit of knowing where so much of the show comes from and right. came from. So I think it was a combination of I had the knowledge of that, I have a puppetry background, obviously, and that's a, that's a big thing because most of the people coming into the show now are not trained puppeteers by nature like we were. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've been directing, too, since, since, you know, over the past few years. So I think that they wanted someone who could come in that could kind of combine those three things. But has, the, has the material changed at all? Very little. Okay. Very little. We changed um, some of Gary Coleman's lines since he passed, right. the real Gary Coleman passed away. We felt yeah. that it was disrespectful. Do you consult with the I'm, original writers? I'm consulted, but it's still it's still Jeff and Bobby and Jeff's show, which, which it should be. It's so not it's, John Tartaglia's it's not, show. <laughs> it's not. It's not John Tartaglia's Avenue Q. I was going to ask if it, if it had turned into John Tartaglia's <laughs> Avenue Q. I'm fighting to get my name over the title, yeah. but I well, thought maybe that's too much. You have a stake in the money, and you have a stake in the producing, right? Oh, uh, oh absolutely. Yeah, 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 totally, yeah, yeah totally, totally, totally control. So, needless to say, <laughs> come to New York, see Avenue Q off Broadway, yes, it's and, still pay, really... and, pay, and pay his bills. Oh, totally, yeah. You've got to start in the business very young. Mm -hmm. Talk about those early years. I actually had a fear of New York City when I was younger. Um, I, didn't, I didn't like the city when I was a kid at all. What scared you about the city? Well, my mother uh, worked part time as an agent. She's a, a, a an actress, but right. she would work part time as an agent. And I was about five or six, seven years old, and she asked if I wanted to start auditioning for commercials, which was great. My mom always asked me, which I think is so important. You know, it was never like you're doing this. Yeah, she wasn't living vicariously through you. She was no, it wasn't like Honey Boo Boo Child, where it was like I was like forced to like drink the magic Kool Aid or whatever she drinks. No, I was like asked if I wanted to. <laughs> If I wanted to do this, but she said, do you want to do commercials? And I said, no, sure, you know? And so she started bringing me to New York City for commercial auditions, and I, I was horrified by it. But of course, this was the 80s, before the, revital, the re revitalization, the, all the cleaning up of the subways, the park. And talk a little bit about, about how you got connected with, with, with Into the Puppetry and with Sesame mm -hmm. Street from the start. Well, I started, I mean, I, I fell into puppetry when I was about seven um, or eight. I don't really remember, but I, I fell in love with the TV show Fraggle Rock. That was the show that kind of changed my life. It's a very long story, but basically I, I wrote a letter to Jim Henson when I was about 11. And um, I never got to meet him, but through a series of really amazing coincidences and, and very ethereal things, he did get my letter and did read it. And um, before he died, I guess he spoke about me to Kevin Clash, who does Elmo. I wrote to Kevin, not knowing this, when I was 14. Really? A fan letter that was huh. just very honest and very like, oh my God, I love Elmo. I love, at the time, Dinosaurs. I don't know if you know that show, but it was a yeah. show. Mm -hmm. And he was baby dinosaur. The God, God loved me, that baby. <laughs> and I love that character. So I just wrote him this letter. And um, I get a phone call one night at, at our house. And he said, you know, this is Kevin Clash. And I was like pooping myself listening to this. And he said, you know, uh, why don't you come to New York City and come see a taping of, of one of our shows? And so I, my mom brought me up here, and that, that's when my whole view of New York City changed, because I had something so exciting. And I came and, and watched them tape, and we went out to lunch, and he said during lunch, he's like, well, um, he's like, why don't you come over to the Muppet Workshop where they build all the Muppets and try on some real Muppets? And I was like, oh my God. I said to him very boldly, I guess, I said, well, why did you call me? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, I was like, I mean, it was awesome, but I was like, but, but out of all the people that write you, and he said, I recognized your name because Jim used to talk about you. When I was about 16 or 17, my parents would, you know, put me on like an Amtrak train. I'd come in and work my day or two at Sesame Street and go home and stay at a hotel here by myself. I mean, they really were, they were like, listen, if you're going to do this, you have to do it. And then when I was 18, I was supposed to go to college and had a full scholarship to the University of Maryland. And I got this phone call. Uh, from our casting director and she said for Sesame Street and she said okay Kevin wants to bring you in for a few days this season it was like 20 days of work and I was like oh, okay <laughs> like this is like a real job now and I had to make the decision and, and my mom and I talked about it so she said well if you're gonna do this you're gonna be an adult you're gonna move to New York City you're gonna find your own apartment and you're gonna live there and you're gonna you're gonna make that decision and it was really scary but I was so excited to follow my dream what I wanted to do and I knew that I knew I had to take that opportunity I knew I had to do it do you look back and, and wish you had gone to college now? You know, it's funny, because of the career I, I wanted and, and have had and chose, no, um, for me, only for me. My, literally my school and my college was Sesame Street and the people I worked with and, and they, they really took care of me. I look back, I'm like, I was 18 living in New York City, mm -hmm. 
by myself, yeah. you know, and I think like, how did I not end up, <laughs> you know, dead in some dumpster somewhere? Because, you know, you make stupid decisions when you're that young. So, but well, so far so good. The, all the hard work paid off and we'll learn more about how that paid off in a moment. Stay tuned. Thank you.